So a while back I made a video on the Wheeler scope levels, uh, the two versions of them, the cheap plastic ones that you should shy away from and the much better uh, aluminum Pro Series one um, and why these are so much better because the, uh, the bubbles don't have to be exactly the same. Um, here recently somebody asked me if I would do a demo of um, the Pro Series one. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. If it's something you're interested in, stick around. Okay, like I said, I had somebody that wanted me to do a demo on how to use the Wheeler Pro levels. I made a video a while back, like I said, um, about the the Pro versions and the extremely cheap ones. This is the Browning X-Bolt long range in a 6.5 PRC. Um, if you're a reloading guy and you're looking into a 6.5 PRC, do not buy this rifle because it's in a short action and a PRC really should be in an intermediate or long action if you like seating your bullets really close. Otherwise, you're never gonna get your bullets in a mag. So, and then I'm gonna be mounting the Athlon Ares BTR, 30 millimeter, 50 millimeter front. So the first thing you're gonna do is get your bases down. Um, if you're going with just a two piece um, bottom rings and not a Picatinny across the top, or across the bottom, sorry. Get those mounted down, get everything across the bottom mounted. The second thing you're gonna do is if you notice I have this on a bag instead of a vise. I have a couple of vices but what it does is it makes that um, the gun nose down which is fine to work on and stuff but leveling scopes it's not really something you want because what you're going to want to do is take the smaller of the two levels and put it across here. Now if you just have the bases and you don't have the rail you're going to set it across there like that. Now the reason I say you want it to be flat or pretty close to being flat um, long ways is because levels work at 90 degrees of each other so this works good as long as this works good this works good as long as this works good the problem you get when you put um, guns on an angle is you take that level that just wants to go straight back and forth and what you do is you angle it and if you don't get that thing perfectly 90 degrees to the gun and it's off just a couple of degrees it's gonna throw your level off so get it pretty dang close so get it down here where you want it, get it across 90 degrees to the action, wiggle it around, get it where you want it. Once you get that where you want it, then you're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step, you're gonna take the, uh, the barrel level here, and it's pretty simple. It's got a couple nuts here that open and close. Um, this one here, it's on a kind of a pivot that allow you to wrap this over the barrel. It doesn't really matter as far as where you're at on the barrel. It's just as long as you are on the barrel. All this one is doing is keeping the level so that when you compare this one to the next one on the scope, this screw here will allow you to raise and lower this from this side. This is on a spring system back here. So what I like to do is get it close, but I like to favor that one side a little bit because I like to do the fine adjustment up here. You're not trying to do the fine adjustments with these down here. You're trying to do the fine adjustment with this one right here. So with the one in the back still on your rail leveled up, you're just gonna start moving this one here. What it's going to do is it's going to start bringing that bubble. And what it's doing is it's raising this up. And once you get the bubble level here and level in the back across your rail and your level exactly the same, make sure these suckers are tight. And then you're on to the next step. Okay, so now we can take the level on the back off because what we've done is leveled this and then leveled the front one to this one so that one can go away because the one in the front is clamped on it's not going to go anywhere you literally take this thing decide you're you're done with it for the night um come back 
tomorrow and mount it. That one in front is gonna stay where it's at. That's basically what we're doing, is taking the level of this, putting it on there, clamping it on, and that way you can do whatever you want back here. You can move it around, you can do whatever. You can put it in the, your safe for the night, two, 10 days, whatever, come back, and it's gonna be level. So, got this, all these all torqued up. Next thing you do is get your scope on, where you want it. You're gonna get your top rings where you want them. Start putting the screws in lightly. You're just trying to get them in there. You're not trying to torque it down just yet. Okay, so now I've got all the tops on. I've got all four screws, front and backs on, in. So now what I'm gonna do, now I've got a mark on mine. I take a lead pencil and I get it where I want it, is I'm gonna move this thing back to where I want it so that I don't have to reside it. You get it close, take this level again, now you're gonna put it across the top here. It's ideal to put it underneath um, if you have a high mount or something like that, but I like mine super low, so I'm gonna have to go across here. I'm just gonna get it close. I'm not trying to get it exact. I'm just getting it close. So as soon as I get it close, I know that's where the scope is gonna lay. So then what I'm gonna start doing is going back through the screws and tidying them up just to where they bottom out and then back it off about an eighth of a turn. So now I've got the screws in, snugged. Make sure the gaps are the same on both sides. You don't want one side pulling harder to the other. Now comes the next step. Put this back up here and get it level the way you want it. So you gotta remember when you're leveling this one, to make sure that the one up front is level, that they're matching each other. That's what's great about these, is you can look right down the barrel to each other and see how they are. Don't go crazy about leveling this one and then finally look up front and realize that you're half a bubble past the line. So that's pretty dang close. If you notice that the bubble is not perfect as far as um, being in the middle, it's because um, with stuff like this, what I do is I pick a line, one side or the other, left or right, um, and make sure, I think it's a lot easier to see the bubble barely touching the line as opposed to trying to gauge how much gap is between the two lines and the bubble. That's just my thing. Doesn't matter. As long as they're both same, doesn't matter. So now we're gonna go on to the next step. I use a Wheeler Fat Wrench. Um, one thing you should always do, make sure all the pressure is off of it when you store it. Um, these should be at around 25 pounds, so we're going to start off low to the uh, 10 pounds and start torquing. And one thing you want to make sure, and I've said this in a, in a video, is you're always going to do a crisscross. Start here, start here, start here, start here, go, and you're going to crisscross. And what that's going to do is going to bring that little bit of that level back and forth and back and forth. If you realize one is starting to get back, you know, if your level starting to rise up on your right hand side you can go back and torque that right hand side and get it to pull back down if your level starting to come up on your left side you can go torque the left side and start bringing it back around but like i said we're going to start at the 10. Now that we've done 10 inch pounds all the way around, you're gonna to wanna to check your level again. Chances are it's gonna be favoring one side or the other. So if it's favoring the right side and that one down south is, is favoring the left side, you need to make sure that you torque on the opposite side accordingly to get that to start pulling back the other way. Because now we're gonna go up to, oh, let's go up to about, oh, let's say somewhere between 15 and 20. And we're gonna do the same thing. 
we're gonna do the crisscross pattern back and forth watching that level as it goes to see which one we need to get on to so this level is still the same as that level they're both fa favoring um, the far side line here so I know that I'm good. It seems like once you get over about the 15 pound mark, uh, that um, the uh, the shifting back and forth seems to disappear. So now we're just gonna go ahead, go up to the 25 pound mark, crisscross, but at the same time, still watch. But the crisscross pattern is very important to make sure that you're taking that torque pattern back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You're not just slamming one side down because what that does is as you slam down the other side, it pulls up on the other side and, and just makes it um, false reading. Now once you're done your, your crisscross pattern, I like to do what they call around the world. Start here, going around. What you're gonna do is start here, and as that clicks and doesn't turn, yeah, that's fine. You know you're ready for the next one. Now this one here turned just a hair. And that one there turned just a hair, so I'm gonna go back, no twist. Oh, a little bit of a twist. And you're just gonna keep doing that until you stop seeing them turn at all, and you just get a nice, solid break just like that you're good to go so that's it that's how i level with these wheeler pro levels like i said um in a previous one these things are way better than those cheap plastic ones and by way better i mean you're better off just to use plumb blob and uh go that route than it is to um use those plastic ones they're going to be frustrating you're going to get mad every time you go out to the range uh, another cool thing about these these wheeler ones is there are actually little screws here on these sides that you can adjust if you have a level that you trust i use a stabilo level which to me is about the best level you can buy you can put that on a level surface put this on a level surface and basically uh calibrate this level here to me that's that's amazing so so that's how i use the wheeler professionals um scope levels um it's the way i use them it's not the way everybody uses them um one thing i can definitely make sure that you want to do is make sure that your rail is level don't just level your gun um, because if you're using a 10 20 30 mm rail and your gun is level your your rail is going to be sloped down and you're going to get into those issues of those false readings on those bubbles trust me i've chased back and forth back and forth back and forth before i finally realized that was what my issue was but that's how i do it thanks for watching Thank you.